Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz, and welcome back to the Dyson Sphere program. Where last time we got interplanetary logistics and planetary logistics both online. So that now we can harvest other planets in the Kappa Delphini system and automate other worlds. And we're gonna be doing a ton of that today, brother. Along with getting a ton of research because we have titanium on our home world which will allow us to automate the yellow science and get like a billion different techs and go absolutely crazy. And you can start going crazy right now on the like button so that you can help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks in advance. But first we have a huge problem. A absolutely crippling power issue. Because when we got the logistics tower set up, our consumption demand went skyrocketing. And everything kind of shot off and it kind of ruined the entire factory planet. So that's not good. We kind of need a power solution. And man, I have no idea what we could possibly do for power in the Dyson Sphere program. Like, what on earth is there to get power from, right? Like, if only there's a cheap technology that could get us a ton of power really, really quick and then let us automate further. Well, guess what? Luckily, there is! Haha! <laughs> Fusion power! These bad boys are like 10 times more efficient than our existing power grid. And also, it uses hydrogen in a roundabout way. And that way, we could hopefully stop backing up on hydrogen through all of our oil systems. Which would make everything like a thousand times more efficient. So we're gonna start today by solving our power issues, finally. And then commence harvesting our solar system! Yay! Also, since we do have a huge stockpile of yellow science cubes, guess what? We're gonna get every other tech we possibly can too. High strength material? Yes, please. And we can get like a billion of these upgrade researches. So over the course of the video here, I'm just gonna be plowing through all of these. So we gotta start things off here with a little bit of planning. So we need a huge fusion power plant area. And also, we wanna make an interplanetary resource hub. And if you notice our world here, I've been building all the factories kind of in the southern hemisphere. And we're gonna have the import hub of the planet on the south pole. Then, once everything's done and looped around the planet, we'll build an export hub on the north pole. Or vice versa, something like that, I'm not sure. Anyway, that's kind of the plan. So we're gonna build a nice little ring around this way. Kind of mark out the size of the hub here. Then we'll clean up literally anything in the way. And after a little bit of organizing and decoration, the hub is done. So we're gonna have multiple of these interplanetary like trade logistics towers all over here. And we'll bring a bunch of resources into the world. We're also gonna have these logistics towers. These are just for bringing materials around the planet kind of everywhere. So they're gonna be like haphazardly placed. But yeah, this is the main hub. But with this all done, we're now gonna set up an area for our power plants. This is gonna be like our main power section of the world here. So it's gonna be huge. Probably the size of our oil factory, if not bigger. And all we're gonna do here is make and store power. Oh yeah, and super quick overview of how this is all gonna work out. So we're gonna have these buildings here. These fractionators? Yeah. That will take the hydrogen. Uh, it only has a 2% chance though to turn the hydrogen into deuterium. So what you have to do is set up a splitty boy, just like this, and then have hydrogen go in a loop. So then you have the hydrogen enter that loop, you change the splitty boy to make the loop the priority input, so this backs up, and eventually, after enough stuff loops together, out will poop a little bit of deuterium. Look at it, so freaking complicated. <laughs> And imagine that small scale setup, except now on a medium scale. So now all the hydrogen is coming in here, and I have three separate loops of a ton of fractionators, and they're all looping the hydrogen together, and eventually everything combines onto this last line into deuterium, and for now I'm just storing it. So we'll have these huge vats of deuterium ready for products. Also, as this power source expands and takes over more of our factory, We'll finally be able to get rid of all these freaking wind turbines and just have deuterium production so we can get more fusion power and be the happiest little robot in the world. So now the only thing left to do is actually put the fuel rods together. And they are pretty straightforward. 
Again, they just need the deuterium, the titanium, and that weird magnet thing. And we are making all those things in our main factory. So, because we live in the future, we don't need to worry about building anything. We can just build a planetary logistics tower, and everything will just come from this. So boom, this will go this way. We'll split things up as we need. I'll go that way. We'll have this request the items we want. Of course, we're gonna have to build a tower in our factory. That's sending the items, but we can do that later. Cool. And we are off to the races. Time to just build some assemblers to make the rods. So we'll start them over here and an output lane right there. And we'll copy another one right here. Do the three lanes again and call it a day. Same deal as any other system we built. Everything just gets dispersed, thrown in the lines, into the machines. Everything then goes this way into boxes and we can plug it all into the machines the mini fusion power reactors. And not a moment too soon because, oh my gosh, my factory weeps. Uh, uh, <laughs> We're only making half of the consumption demand right now, so hopefully this is like the lifesaver or sad. Okay, so each of these is supposed to make nine megawatts. Okay, so that at 100% efficiency is way better than what we've been using so far, the thermal ones which are 2.16 megawatts, and they're only 80% efficient. So huge, near quantum leap in power. All the while while setting this up, I've been getting a ton of new technologies, and we are freaking advanced now. Like, look at all this, compared to what it was before. Crazy. Carrying capacity of the drones, we got speed, we got stacking, we got the whole nine yards. Things are looking good. Are all of these factories getting their things though? Like, do they have fuel rods? Even all the way back here? They do. And that is lasting a while. It looks like each fuel rod might last a minute? That would be incredible. How many of these fuel rods do we have? Uh, okay, we got, we got more than one. We got more than two. This is good. This is very good. So what's our power supply looking like? Wow. It's looking pretty good. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is the first time, I think, since episode one, we've actually met our consumption demand of power. Everything's been running at like half capacity. I vibe with that. Power is dealt with for now. Meaning we now have the opportunity to expand. And expand we shall because, my goodness, I've been busy, busy, busy. As I was making a tower to take all of the items from here to over there, I automated the drones. So both the planetary logistics drones are automated and the interplanetary ones are done too. Then I also automated the towers. So now we have everything we need to take over the entire solar system. And again, while we do, it'd be nice to continue plowing through all these techs. So we're gonna finally automate yellow science over here by making a nice little logistics tower. Great for you, my friend. And we'll have the drones bring over everything we need. And after the other tower set up, all we do is throw in a couple little bots, and off they go to grab all the cool stuff to make the yellow science. So first thing I wanna do is buff all of our logistics stuff. So we're gonna get the high speed assemblers now. Oh yeah, I've also unlocked the Mark III conveyors and sorters as well, so we'll automate these too. Oh yeah, but now we're getting into the spicy meatballs. Mark II assemblers and the Mark III belt stuff. Good, very good. Now we can expand our factory and update things considerably. Because as I was building all of this, I've been watching for memes and I've discovered that these gold chips and these super magnetic rings, both of them are super in demand by all of the late game stuff. So these processing lines have to be expanded like, like a ton, an insane amount. Because over here, along with automating the belts, I just wanted to automate some of the important towers and things too. Like the orbital collector, that's gonna harvest our gas giant and all the other towers and these things as well, the energy exchangers and everything, literally everything is taking like the same stuff. Suffice to say, this is clearly not enough. So it is the number one thing that we're gonna upgrade. Though I have tried, I put in some Assembler Mark IIs, but it's not enough. 
we're gonna have to go crazy with it. And luckily, dude, there's an update that finally happened today. Everybody was waiting for it. Behold, upgrade facilities. We can upgrade belts and lines at our whims now. So you can click either just one belt at a time or you can hold shift and you can select entire belt segments. And it's literally that easy. Takes all of one click. Upgraded, mark two. Cool, eh? You can do the same thing with all the machines as well. I don't think the shift works. No, but you can just click on each of them and it upgrades the machines. Not like it matters much here because, you know, we're not producing enough. But yeah, super awesome upgrade. I am so happy that it's finally in the game. I was not looking forward to replacing all of this baguette. So very, very timely update. Anyway though, factory expansion time. We are going to be building a huge new area, excuse me, ship, over here. So this little area of the factory is going to be for mass, mass production. So help with making more of the super magnets and the gold ships. We're going to be paving all this all the way down here pretty much and we're gonna make a billion gold chips per minute well not a billion but like a lot like a truly insane amount like this is probably a late game kind of setup we got a lot going on here so i started with all of these super magnets right they need just these other engines magnets of course and the graphite so the graphite and magnets are fine but then for the engines made another two rows of these so there's one row of the super, another two rows of machines for the intermediary, three rows, kinda, for the starter motors, and then there are auxiliary factories everywhere for all the other things. And it only took a billion hours! Also, I went ahead and I expanded on the gold ship production too. So it's not as extreme, but it's something, it's something. So now we have a full line of high purity silicone, and soon to be a full line of a copper. I actually went all the way to our other world to grab more silicone because over on Cappa Delfini, you can see here, there's actually silicone veins, like in ore form, available for smelting. So it's way easier to make silicone here and bring it back home. So with a full Mark II belt and a Mark III belt of copper, we're gonna be making all the stuff we need here. And yeah, pretty much same old, same old. Green chips, blue chips, gold chip. And then probably there's one more chip, but we'll be okay for that later. But now we're looking good. Well, actually, I guess that's more so a matter of perspective. But I think things are looking good. Now to get everything running, we just have to connect this one belt. And off we go. Third of it is going into this tower, which will be a supply tower for any other copper lines. Another third of it is going straight up for the magnets over here. And the last third I am pretty sure is going for the gold circuit boards over here. Yes, it is. So yeah, this is kind of like the big thing. Why isn't it going though? Oh, no, 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 wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. Come with me, friend. Can we just make some assemblers over here? Oh no, no. The magnets, they're made in the smelter. <laughs> this is really bad. This is extremely bad. This is a <laughs> mission critical failure. Okay, I'm pretty screwed. Yep, I'm very screwed. I'm gonna have to delete all these lines. I'm gonna have to make some magnets somewhere and then I'll bring the magnets in through this tower. Yep, well that was freaking awful. I managed to clear out the copper line too again, just so we could see this thing all start up at once. And then I added in a bunch more machines over here because I have a feeling we're gonna need even more of these coils. Just a hunch, but extra capacity is always good. Anyway, round two. Let's see this thing go. Oh, go copper. It was over here. Now, I'm hoping we have way over capacity here of machines. I would expect probably like up to here, only these machines will actually run, and that's kind of fine. That's just because we're probably gonna be upgrading things later on. Checking on things over here. We're making the motors, good. All the motors from all these machines going to this line. Scooting in. 
got the motors, we got the magnetic rings, good, that gets us the green ones, fantastic, and we're actually making more of these. Uh, the reason I set things up as I did is because, hey, it's the other super magnet setup. So now we can just plug all of these into our existing setup so we can make things faster. I'm very curious how many of these are actually gonna run. I would love it if all of them did, and then we could just add in like another row. Maybe things will start to back up. It really depends on these. And yeah, kind of like I was expecting. It's mainly just half of them running over here. But you know what? We could do something a little, little radical. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have another belt coming out this way, up and over all of the spaghetti, and merge it with the other blue copper belt here. And now we got the full line. Ha ha ha! Now. Maybe all of these will run. Maybe. Wait, why is this backing up? Why have things stopped? Wait, what? This is unexpected. Wait, no, it's running. We're overproducing? Something's backing up somewhere. Do we not have enough of this production? What's the problem? Oh, is it just straight up iron? Oh, it's just iron. Oh, what a lovely problem to have. Okay, dude, well, guess what? We can first upgrade this line super easily with the freaking upgrade tool. It's so good. Boop. Now will this become a bottleneck? I'd love for these late stage things to become a bottleneck. Let me build more, please. It's happening. Oh yeah, it's backing up. <laughs> oh boy. You know what that means? We're doubling it up, brother. More super magnets. Oh, and the belt work's not even gonna be that difficult, cause guess what, this boy's just gonna loop right around. Oh, it's glorious. It's glorious, look at this, the line's all the way backed up. Oh, and the gold chips, I totally forgot about them. How are we looking over here? Well, this is fine, I, I knew this was gonna be fine. It's much more simple. And I will just leave this all be. I am 100% sure that the bottleneck now is gonna be these like tier one motor productions. And what we could easily do, Oh, we could easily do. That's so easy, I'm gonna do it now. Ah, why, it's already good enough. Future kids would be mad. Let's do it now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have a blue line enter over here, and then another blue line enter over here. They'll merge together into this one, and then we'll be rocking and rolling. Oh yeah, I already know. Future Kibbs is gonna be hyped about this. Just set the filter onto iron. Hello? And we're out of iron. Cool. Well, that only means we just need more drones to throw into the system so they can carry more. Or we need more drone upgrades. And that, that's fine. That's fine. Ah oh, yeah. This line's gonna be full, this line's gonna be full. All of these are gonna be running. Dude. Awesome. Extra production, done skis. So then let's get into our galactic strategy. So this is our cluster of stars and planets and such. And this is our home solar system. And we are going to be making our Dyson Sphere on Cape Delfini. So if our Dyson Sphere is there, we're gonna need a lot of other solar systems like resources in order to make that happen. So we'll grab like probably all of these local systems and bring them all to here. Meaning there's gonna be a lot of business happening here. So the plan is to make Kappa Delphini 4, our outlier planet, way on the outskirts of our little solar system, a hub world. So this planet will just accept all materials from all over the freaking universe and then distribute them to where they need to go. So like Kappa Delphini 1, our lava world next to the sun, will then become a Dyson Sphere production factory. All things related to making the Dyson Sphere will be produced here. Like I know there are some like sails and like structure pieces to make the sphere. All those automated here will literally make this entire planet dedicated to that one project. As for our home world, it will continue to be kind of like a hub world and wherever we need like equipment or like extra parts over at the lava world, We'll make it here and scoot it over. Main thing being oil. This is the only place we can get oil in the solar system, so we're gonna have a lot of oil production here. A lot, a lot. Probably 4x the size of this, yeah. And this will just continue to grow forever. 
It's already looking so cool. Oh man, I love how this is organized. Oh, and then our hub. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is gonna be awesome. So I've done a little tiny bit of prep to get these planets going. I've unlocked some new tech, the solar sail orbit system, and mainly the high strength lightweight structure. So we can get these frame materials, and those frame materials help us build these guys, satellite substations, which are like the Mark III power supply type deals. Now, I've never actually used one yet, so we can see what's up there once we get them. I've been making them for a little while, uh, quite a while. <laughs> now, let's see here. So if we put one down, oh, that's big. Whoa, dude. Oh, I like this. I like this. So now we can cover a planet in these. Dude, what the? That is the coolest thing ever. Look at the radius. That's super hype. All of the lava planet will be covered in these. 100,000 of these. Super, super, super cool. Also, we have a power issue on the other world, and I don't want to make a fusion power plant over there. So I was looking into the interstellar power transmission things, and they don't work as I thought. What these do is they charge the batteries, or accumulators. So when you build them, you poop them into here, it charges them, and then sends them out. And apparently that's how you send power from world to world, which is very strange. So I guess we'd make these charging. Okay. Okay, I like the look of this. We'll make this one charging as well. And I suppose we'll just keep sending accumulators back and forth. Uh-huh. This is probably way, 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 way too small. Probably need a bigger system, and we'll probably build that bigger system next to our power plant. And so it was spoken, and so it was done. We now have that system right behind all of our generators here. Very simple stuff. Bring the empty batteries in, they scoot over this way, get distributed by all of these charging stations. Then they scoot this way once charged into this little logistics tower, and then into this new interplanetary tower to go out to the lava world and power it. And at night, this is gonna look super freaking cool. So, charge mode, can we copy this? Oh, you better believe it. Look at that! Once we get the batteries actually charging, hopefully it constantly is lighting up, because that would be the coolest thing ever, brother. There we go. Oh, yeah, dude! And this is probably one of the only times we'll get to see this, because we do not have a ton of accumulators, so this will never be filled up like this. Gorgeous! Okay, let's move and groove, though. Now all the charged batteries are going to Capadelfini 1! And we'll power the entire planet. By the way, I've made some modifications to the world. And I have added in all these power towers, so when we automate this world, everything should be super duper convenient. Main thing is that those batteries are getting delivered, though. So over here, I've made an uncharging or decharging station? Right over here. So it's the same thing, except now we do discharge. That's the word. And we can copy that setting. Oh, that's so cool how the buildings like change. That's awesome. Now hopefully this is enough to power the entire world for now. Alrighty. Uh, let's quickly check the power right now. Real bad. <laughs> and with this, hopefully that changes. We're getting a lot of these online now, of course. And is this enough? Hello? Oh wait, what? Dude, I'm looking at the generation capacity. We have to look at the battery here. Charging power zero, recharging, discharging power 74 megawatts. So, am I, if I'm understanding this correct, we're literally perfect. The batteries are only being discharged when the consumption demand, like, demands it. Yeah, the power overlay is all blue. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> good, good, good. Our power issues here are solved forever. And now we can easily just rebuild that exact system over on Kappa Delphini 4 and take that planet over as well. And now with our logistics all settled, Next time, we're gonna start setting up our Dyson Sphere. However though, that's gonna be all for today, so I hope you guys enjoyed, and thank you for watching. But have a fantastic rest of your day, and bye bye <laughs>